All right. Well, thank you, Gleb, and uh, thank you, everyone, for making the time uh, this morning, well, wherever, or whatever time zone it is where you are. Uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about what we've been doing with data quality at Thumbtack. So without further ado, let me share my screen and talk through some lightning slides. OK, let's pull up this PDF here. And let's go into presentation mode. Cool. So we're talking about automating data quality. And the first thing is, what is Thumbtack? And who am I, right? So first, what is Thumbtack? Thumbtack is a marketplace that connects local professionals and customers uh, who are looking to get something done. So if you're looking for a handyman to fix a leaky faucet, if you're looking to get a TV mounted, you're looking to hire a DJ for that party when we all get the vaccine, Thumbtack is the app that makes it happen. And we're the marketplace that makes it happen. Uh, I'm a director on the product analytics team here at Thumbtack, and I'll talk to you today about something we've been doing uh, on our data team to make ourselves more efficient and productive. So first of all, what is our data team? We actually have a pretty large data team. We have over 50, I think, um, analysts and data scientists at Thumbtack working on different data problems across our marketplace, which makes sense. The data is the lifeblood of a marketplace like ours. Um, but we actually have a relatively small data and data platform engineering team, uh, maybe about five engineers currently. Uh, we're looking to scale that team uh, pretty aggressively uh, for the next phase of our growth, but it's a pretty lean and nimble team. Um, and the reason why we've been able to scale our analytics team so well has actually been because, uh, one, we hire great engineering talent, and two, they've built some fantastic tools for us in-house over the years that have enabled us to scale really well. Uh, but when you have a team this small, uh, one natural problem is, well, how do you build your data warehouse? And uh, the answer Thumbtack came up with was, let's have the analysts make the data warehouse. Um, and so really, the idea was, if we could just build internal tools, and we're talking like, this is like in the dark ages before GBT, before all the modern data modeling technologies, uh, Thumbtack internal engineering just said, hey, let's go build a tool that enables our analysts uh, to build their own data warehouse. Uh, we've come a long way since then. Um, our stack today is basically mostly open source. We've got Google BigQuery as a data warehouse or data platform. Uh, it's populated using jobs in, written in Spark, uh, in languages like Python and Scala, uh, or all orchestrated through Airflow. And our analysts build data visualizations in Mode and Tableau. Uh, but what ties it all together is our internal tooling that's enabled the analysts to basically write these jobs just using SQL. You don't need to know Scala or Python or what have you. Just write some SQL, and magic happens. It becomes a Spark job orchestrated through Airflow. Dependencies are magically taken care of, and your data appears in BigQuery. So we've got a torrent of analytics productivity at this company. Um, I think I last checked uh, yesterday, and I think we're at like a run rate of about 100 pull requests a month in our repo that just drives it into a warehouse. This is easily even looking at repos or internal analysis or code sharing. And so that's really enabled us to scale um, the business very rapidly. Um, and really evolve the product rapidly, because you can only evolve the product as fast as you're learning from your data. And then once you iterate, you've got new data. You've built new data sets. You're generating new events. You've got all these new things. And you luckily have the ability for your analysts to quickly go and get you the data to go look at in your dashboards. Um, but this naturally unleashes a new problem as well. Uh, there's a reason Facebook's motto initially was move fast and break things, because you kind of have the two kind of go together. Uh, so when you've got a really productive analytics team, uh, they're going to write a bunch of code, and not all that code is going to be great. Um, and you know, when you're small, that's fine. But when you've got a large analytics team, you've got a large company, uh, you're a unicorn, um, you're going to run into some problems if you don't try to take care of data quality. Uh, one of our company values is lead with why. And so let's talk a little bit about why data quality is a problem or risk for us. Um, and that's because when you've got data this complex, one bug in one data set, like you just make a typo and it slips past code review. One could corrupt an entire table. Two, that table may drive other tables that you aren't even aware exist. And so you suddenly have cascading outages that mean the CEO is like, what happened to my dashboard this morning? And an entire team of analysts spends the whole day cleaning that up. Um, and it's not just that it is annoys teams or executives. It's like there's real business impact the moment this happens. We're training production machine learning models on this data. We're automating ad bidding with this data. There's real monetary impact if we don't address these outages quickly. And so the best thing, of course, is to prevent that from happening at all. And so what we did was we said, hey, let's have a bunch of manual processes. So I took a screen cap of um, one of our wiki pages. Like This is an early version of a code review playbook uh, we wrote that basically said, hey, um, when you do a code review, when you author a pull request, hey, make sure that you know the number of rows you're touching is what you expected. The columns you're changing or touching are what you expected. Make sure you look at dependencies. Um, and so again, it works a little bit, but uh, not a scalable process once you're trying to get to like 50 analysts or higher. And so 
you've got a bunch of spreadsheets. Uh, I've obscured some data here, but this is an actual spreadsheet an analyst made just to compare the rules that were, you know, changed by one of our pull requests. Um, and it's like, you know, you've got now analysis just to like make a simple change in your data warehouse. And so it's a lot better than where we would have been as an industry five, 10 years ago, but still not great. And so luckily Dataflow came along um, and now we've got this built into our continuous integration in GitHub, where basically Dataflow runs anytime you make a pull request and says, okay, here's the table you're changing. In this example, it's some table called b.serviceltv. Here's your branch and here's what you changed. Uh, here's you know uh, any duplicate rows like that you change up uh, you know any like uh, unexpected data and there's actually a link called view diff that takes you to a view that actually shows you things like okay so what did you actually change in this table oh it looks like some values for individual rows are different I have like blurred out the primary keys here but you can see you can see right away like are these changes in the direction we expect like do we expect there to be like truly a close to 100 percent match with this column or we're you expecting a bigger change you can see right off the bat whether your data quality is like what you were expecting and reviewers can see it too and so now we are at the rate we're basically automating code review or close to it on 100 pull requests a month and this is just a start we're looking to really grow the team this year because we're looking to build the next generation of our data platform as we're entering a new phase of growth um, and so i got to close with a pitch we're hiring lots of openings across our data teams uh, but that's my lightning talk and thank you all for coming to my ted talk <laughs>